Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we can derive the quadratic formula for solving quadratic equations. And the best way I can think of doing this is to give you a numerical example alongside an algebraic example. And also I'm assuming that you've watched my earlier videos on completing the square because that's the method we're going to be using. So let's take this equation here 2x squared plus 5x plus 1 equals 0 and we've got an equivalent algebraic one here. Now to solve quadratic equations like this by completing the square best thing you can do is always divide through by this initial number in front of x squared. So doing that if we divide both sides by 2 is going to give us x squared plus 5 over 2 times x plus a half and that's going to equal 0. And if we do the same here then we're just going to get x squared plus b divided by a times x plus c over a. And that's going to equal 0. Next we complete the square over these first two terms. And by completing the square what we're going to have is a bracket, all squared. Remember we put the x at the front here and we halve the coefficient of x. So half of 5 over 2 is going to be plus 5 over 4. And when you square this out you're going to get x squared. You'll get two lots of 5 quarters x which is 5 over 2x. Then you'll get the last term squared which is 25 over 16. And it's not here so what we do is we subtract it. So we subtract 25 sixteenths. Then I'm going to put back that half so it's plus a half and it equals zero. So doing the same over here we're therefore going to have a bracket all squared. We put x at the front here and we halve the coefficient of x. Half of b over a is b divided by 2a. If you square this out you'll get x squared plus b over a times x and then you'll get this last term squared which will be b squared over 4a squared. It's not here so we need to subtract it so we subtract minus b squared then over 4a squared and then put back the plus c divided by a and this equals 0. Next in the numerical example what I'm going to do is add 25 sixteenths to both sides and subtract a half. So therefore what we're left with is x plus 5 over 4 all squared equals 25 sixteenths minus 1 half. Doing the same over here is to add b squared over 4a squared to both sides and subtract c over a from both sides. So we're going to have x plus b divided by 2a and that's all squared equals b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Now what I'm going to do next is to put both these terms over a common denominator. That common denominator will be 16. So we'll put that over 16 and we're going to have 25 sixteenths. Now for the half, what do I multiply the 2 by to give 16? Well it's 8 so I need to multiply the top of the fraction by 8 to give me minus 1 times 8 which is just 8. So this gives me x plus 5 over 4 all squared, it's equal to this. But if I square root both sides I'm going to be left with x plus 5 quarters on the left hand side but I need to square root the right hand side so just put a square root sign round here and don't forget it will be plus or minus. And if I do the same on this side here 
That is, we'll put these two fractions over a common denominator. That common denominator, well, it will be 4a squared. We've already got the b squared up the top here, b squared over 4a squared. Now for this fraction, what do I multiply a by to give 4a squared? Well, it's 4a, so I need to multiply the c with 4a. So we end up with minus 4ac. And then, this is x plus b over 2a all squared, but what I'm going to do is take the square root to both sides. So I'm left with x plus b divided by 2a equals the square root now of the right hand side and don't forget it can be plus or minus. Now to get towards x I'm just going to subtract 5 quarters from both sides here so what we end up with is x equals minus 5 quarters plus or minus now for this square root, 25 take away 8 is 17. And so I've got 17 sixteenths. And when you've got a fraction, remember you can square root the top divided by the square root of the bottom. Well, it's easy to square root 16. That's going to be 4. But as for the top, the root of 17 or 25 take 8 is not a nice square root. So I'm just going to leave it as either 17 or we'll just rewrite it as the root at the moment of 25 minus 8. So doing the same thing over here, just to get x, I'm going to subtract b over 2a from both sides. So that means x equals minus b divided by 2a. Then it's going to be plus or minus. And then when it comes to square rooting this fraction, it's the same as the square root of the top divided by the square root of the bottom. The top I can't square root accurately, so therefore we'll just leave that as a root sign round b squared minus 4ac. But I can square root the denominator here, 4a squared. It's going to be 2a. Now both of these contain the same denominator, so I can write them over the same denominator. So for this one here, we've got x equals, and that common denominator is 4. So we end up with minus 5, plus or minus. Now I could write the root of 25 minus 8, but that is 17. So we've got the square root of 17 there. For this one, we end up with x equaling, that common denominator is 2a, and what we've got is minus b, plus or minus the square root then of b squared minus 4ac. And that's our quadratic formula that we're out to prove. So you can see that if we take our values of a, b and c then as 2, 5 and 1 respectively, substitute them into here, you'll see you get this result here. So clearly, obviously, the quadratic formula is going to save us having to do the completing the square method okay, in its full length. We can just take the shortcut. So I hope that's given you some idea then how we go about proving the quadratic formula.